good soil health means good production. When we have good healthy soils, we're able to, to maintain that productivity. We're able to maintain those nutrients, keep those nutrients on the soil, and increase our crop yields. Cover crops actually, you know, they're practices that our grandparents used to, used to do as far as keeping our soils covered as many months as a year as possible. And you know, we've kind of gotten away from that in the past 20 or 25 years. We've forgotten some of those practices that we've used over centuries. You know, at the end of the day, we really found out that keeping our soils covered with cover crops, uh, they're really contributing to the success and the bottom line, uh, both economically and environmentally to production ag. The Great Lakes Cover Crop Initiative is a project that is overseen by CTIC uh, with the idea of, of increasing cover crop and conservation tillage in the Great Lakes Basin. There's been a lot of issues in the last several years as far as water quality in the Great Lakes. I think over the years, you know, we really benefit in the Great Lakes because we do have an ample supply of clean water. But some of our farming practices and some of the intensity of our agriculture has put a stress on the system as far as maybe some erosion, sedimentation, nutrient loading in some of our waterways. Strategies to solve the harmful algal bloom problem why people think it's so important that we do that, figure that out very quickly on Lake Erie and then transfer it. We're concerned about what we call harmful algal blooms. Blue-green algae are common during really warm weather when we have high concentrations of phosphorus primarily, but high concentrations of nutrients. And blue-green algae or cyanobacteria are capable of producing toxins. The biggest concern with agriculture is that in order to have a bloom, you need to have nutrients. Well, if we put fertilizer into Lake Erie, it results in a bloom. And on Lake Erie, the primary source of the phosphorus is agricultural runoff. If you can keep water where it belongs, the fertilizer is going to stay where it belongs. You'll be able to use less fertilizer and achieve the same or close to the same results. You're improving the, the bottom line of your own operation. You're improving the quality of, of you might say, life around others also. Because, you know, in the, in the water that, that leaves our farm eventually gets to places that, that uh, people draw water for their living. If we can cover the soil up and, and make sure the soil doesn't leave our farm and the water that, le that does leave our farm is of, of higher quality, then we're ahead of the game. And that's why I think cover crops are a bigger benefit than the no-till even, because we always have something living and growing on the soil holding it. We're stopping the nutrients from moving off. We're stopping the soil from moving off. And uh, you know we definitely think that we're, uh, we're helping that water quality. What we've experienced with the cover crops is uh, we've been able to increase the organic matter in our soils. We're getting better water infiltration. Uh, when we get large rainfall events, uh, we don't have the runoff that we normally had before. Uh, we have no soil loss on our farms. Uh, when we get large rainfall events, the soil stays in place. We're not losing phosphorus and nitrates to the water. The challenges are always you might say a mindset and challenges of the unknown and, and the management side of it. We've got about every type of soil that you could imagine on the farm and in fact this field right here has several from one end to the other. You know that causes some challenges um, even if you look at the cover crop the um, different species show up. Some of them do well in the sandy soil, some do well in the clay soils and, and some are going to do better in the muck soils. Where when we move into the cocktail mixes and, and we've got 13 or 14 different things in there, you can't tell the soil type change. Something 
everything picked up and grew in that area. And, and that's the nice thing about getting that mix on the farm is, you know, there, you don't see the bare spots or the thin spots. There's always something there and growing. One of the earlier challenges that we experienced uh, was timely application of cover crops. Since we've uh, built our own machine today, a cover crop applicator, we're able to be more timely and uh, get the cover crops out here so we can get them started, have them growing very well by the time we take off uh, soybeans or corn. We believe in cover crops basically because it's my desire to improve the soil and leave, leave the land in, in a better state or better quality than, uh, than what uh, but I received it. Being able to sleep easier at night that our farm's not washing away, you know, things like that are, are big benefits. We had a, a definite need to uh, control soil erosion on our farms and have better water quality on our farms. And so we started looking at the cover crops. Look around for farmers in the area that are, that are trying that, and the, uh, particularly the ones that, are, that have been, um, been at it for a while that have a, a, some, some form of expertise and, and can, can give you practical, sound advice. I would uh, definitely encourage farmers to uh, start looking at cover crops, figure out a way to make them work in their, uh, their management. Uh, a farmer needs to start out kind of on a small scale, uh, learn from that, and figure out what works best for, as far as your management skills. There's always something to learn. I mean, e even for me, I come out here every day and see something different. Each farm is different, and, and I think each field is different. And we look at what attributes that we want to gain from those cover crops. Let's not overthink this thing. You know, let's, let's start with something, you know, some of the crops that, that we're, you know and you're comfortable with. Uh, let's start incorporating them on, on small acreages and, and see how it works. Uh, and then we can go from there. There's a lot of excitement and opportunities in agriculture. Cover crops, conservation tillages, a lot of those sustainable practices I think are all going to be part of our future. I always talk about water and energy and how they're going to be critical in our production systems and, and, and how we use less water and use less energy to produce food. And I think cover crops are all part of that solution. I just kind of wish we'd have started with cover crop long before we did.